I know, I know, I'm late. But about a month ago, I binge watched Breaking Bad, and it's probably one of my favorite television series of all time, if not my favorite series. It has everything from plot twist to character development, mental issues, and it's all in a great show. If you haven't ever seen it, please, please stop this video and go watch it. It's only 62 hours long. Now that you did that, let me briefly summarize it. Essentially, the show stars Walter White, a Tony Soprano character if Tony Soprano was a teacher before a mob boss. He was a whatever guy who was diagnosed with cancer and it led him to cooking meth for big money. However, he is really good at it and eventually falls down the rabbit hole of a meth distributor or, well, cook. Crazy shit goes down, he ends up going by the name Heisenberg, but that is not the character we're analyzing today. In the show, Walter meets Jesse Pinkman at complete random. We first meet Jesse escaping a house that is getting raided by the DEA. The DEA was there for a meth bust. Walter. Knowing this, decides to incorporate Jesse as a distributor and Walter as the cook. For all the fans, this dude goes through some pretty tragic things. In the first meeting, Walter meets Jesse just hours after the DEA bus, and Jesse is extremely cautious. I mean, imagine if your old high school teacher, who failed you, was just in the DEA car watching you escape from a crime who is now here for whatever reason. I would respond the same way. Once Walter first asks him about cooking, though he is more shocked than anything, Walter then gives him an ultimatum. Either he will help him, or he's going to turn him in. Everyone has different points when Walter turns bad. This isn't the start, just a point where he is giving an ex-student a terrible ultimatum. Obviously, Jesse takes the deal. For me, the first inside look we get at Jesse is when he stumbles into his parents' backyard. We find out his parents' second kid, or his brother, is very successful, and they have him all around the house. Jesse isn't upset by this, though. Actually, he enjoys his little brother. He tries to connect to him, but all for it to fail. I mean, it gets to a point where his brother joints gets found and Jesse takes the fall, which ends up getting him kicked out. Or Dan, in the first season when they met with Tuco. Tuco kicks the shit out of him, literally all for Walter to be the one to tell him to get deeper in business. Yeah, Walter was the one who decided that they should work with Tuco. And even when they turn the tables on Tuco, it's Jesse who ends up getting beat and Walter aiming a semi-automatic weapon and doesn't even shoot at once. When we see the first real loss of Jesse is when he's out of money and his parents are kicking him out. He calls Walter asking for money and Walter is dealing with his own problems and he refuses. Eventually, Walt gives him the money, but the RV that they were cooking in is in the junkyard and they need to get it back. Yeah, Jesse ends up having to break in, gets blue doo-doo all over him, well, you don't gotta talk about that. Jesse, with the remaining money, rents a duplex under the name Jesse Jackson, and he meets this girl. We'll get into her later. Around this time, Jesse meets up with his buddies, and the only important one right now is Combo. I will get into him later. Everything's chill until another one of his buddies, Skinny Pete, gets robbed with the meth that him and Walter were cooking. Jesse tells Walter this, and instead of giving him a direct demand, Walter hands him a gun and tells him to deal with the people that rob Skinny Pete. Jesse, infiltrating their home, sees a kid there instead of the people he was after. He ends up taking care of the kid until dealers come home with an ATM. Jesse has the upper hand until he's sneaked up on. Once he wakes up, the two are arguing. The dude tells the woman, who is in fact a prostitute, to shut her skank ass up. And if there's one thing that prostitutes don't like being called, it's a skank. She crumbles his head and gets high and goes to sleep. Jesse opens up the ATM, but what happens next is what I want to capitalize on. He literally stops himself, takes the kid outside before he calls the cops so the kid doesn't have to see his mother and his dad dead. It's a small start, but it's a stepping stone for Jesse and the world he has come to involve himself in. And who knows, Jesse may see himself in the kid. Like I said, Jesse was a small time cook, nothing major, and is now part of a much bigger thing. This immediately falls into the first somewhat sign of sadness when Combo, his friend, ends up getting shot when a drug deal goes wrong. 
The true sign of emotion comes out when Walter asks about who Combo was when Jesse was trying to tell him that he died. Jesse angrily hangs up, and around this time, Jesse starts getting like high high with Jane, like speed high. And the iconic scene, Jesse wants his money. He even goes to the school where Walt is to demand it. Once Walt won't give it to him, Jesse has opened to Jane about everything he does and all that good jazz, and she comes up with a blackmail plan. Walt eventually falls into this plan, but he tells Jesse he won't be seeing any more money. This falls into the saddest scene of the show. Jane and Jesse say they will get high and do speed one more time and that's it. Unfortunately, that is the time where she ODs in her sleep and dies. This is an incredibly hard and sad scene to watch. But of course, Walter is there and decides not to help her. Of course, Jesse wakes up in a complete panic because everything up until this point was pretty great in his life. Jesse and Jane enjoyed each other and who really knows what would have happened if she hadn't died. Jesse goes into complete shutdown mode, shutting himself from Walt and even the poor girl's father. Jesse immediately takes blame and does it pretty much for the rest of the show. He takes himself to rehab and breaks down a few times there as well. We see Jesse continuously calling Jane's number because her voicemail is still on there, and that is really disheartening. We see him call it all the way to the point until it's finally disconnected. He ends up taking the RV out and he does some really dumb stuff like convince a girl to take the stuff they made for gas. Jesse takes a creation to Walt hoping he'd be proud, but of course he isn't and he's upset that he just even tried to cook it. Jesse notices that his old house is for sale though his lawyer, Saul Goodman, decides to buy it from his parents. I think this is more of a sign of gain for Jesse, because, you know, his parents didn't want anything to do with him, at least he'll have the house that he grew up in. Jesse meets with Walt for the other part of his money, and Walt gives it to him, but will make sure he doesn't get any more. Jesse, pissed off, storms out and breaks Walter's windshield. For some a little bit of the next information, I am going to have to name some characters and how they impact Jesse and Walt to an extent. Pretty much, Walter's brother-in-law, Hank, is a DEA agent, and he is on the trail of the meth that they are cooking and selling. He even makes his way to the RV, but without a warrant, he can't get inside. Walt devises a plan to get someone from the inside to call and pretend Hank's wife is in the hospital. Once Hank figures out it's only a ploy, he is pissed. Well, why does this matter? Because he beats the absolute piss out of Jesse. That is two for two, folks, that this kid is getting messed up. Walt, being afraid Jesse is going to talk, goes to the hospital, tries to convince him to come back to cook. Jesse is upset by this offer and declines, even if it's a million and a half dollars. Alright, a little more backstory to the tragedy that is about to unfold for Jesse. You see, after they dealt with this guy, Tuco, Jesse and Walt moved to the big money lab done by this guy named Gus. The thing is, Gus is trying to replace Jesse with this guy, Kale, who isn't really bad at all. He's actually a chill guy who's just trying to make money. Walter gets the hunch that Gus wants to replace Jesse with Gale. Worried that's going to happen, Walt has Jesse shoot Gale in cold blood to save their own asses. Jesse has had to deal with a lot, but in this very moment, this is where I feel like his mind had been broken. After this, he's having flashbacks, and dude can't even play video games without having that go through his head. Once this, and everything previously occurred, he does what any reasonable kid does. Throws a three-day house party. With horror flashbacks, of course. Jesse and Walter have a falling out. <laughs> Jesse's next love interest is this girl here, Andrea. And she has a child named Brock. And Jesse really enjoys Brock. Jesse's convinced that Walter poisoned Brock. Brock, why did you poison him? Who's Brock? And spoiler alert, he used speech 100 and convinced Jesse that he didn't. Anyways, Walter convinces Jesse that they need to kill Gus. Jesse whistles out a couple times and Walter does not get very happy. Man, this dude has been through the ringer. Let's get to the next set. I do need to explain Todd. Todd is the exact opposite of Jesse. He's manipulative, dangerous. The next insane thing that happens is they're trying to steal methylamine from a train. Once they get it and complete it, a child approaches them. 
he simply waves and Todd's first inclination is to shoot the kid. And as we know, hey, Jesse likes kids. Why would that happen? I would dare to say it's the whole reason Jesse decides to split with Mike. This world has gotten too tough for him and it's time for him to get out. He goes on a spree of just throwing money out of his car, all to the point that he ends up just crashing his car. Not long after, he finally puts two and two together and realizes that Wolf was the one who poisoned Brock. You had him still off of me, and all for that asshole Mr. White! He poisoned Brock! He poisoned Brock and you! You helped him! And he throws gasoline all over his house, and he's about to blow it up. Not before Hank comes in to him, and he wants to come clean and they can both take Walter down. He can't keep getting away with it! He can't keep getting away with it! He won't. Jesse describes Walter as a devil in the confession, really portraying that Walt has a significant impact on Jesse. But we haven't really gotten to see the worst yet. So quick little recap. Dead girlfriend, beaten up twice, had to kill somebody, watch somebody die like three times. Do I need to say more? Anyways, major spoilers coming up, like final episodes. Walter, who hit his share of the money, I think it's like $8 million, he had hit it where him and Jesse first cooked the RV. Jesse convinces him that he found the money and that he's gonna burn it if he doesn't make it to the spot. Walt rushes there and we get this great scene. Can't you see that I needed you on my side to kill Gus? I ran over those gangbangers. I killed Emilio and Crazy 8Y. Anyways, Walt's there and realizes that it's a trap. The DEA with Jesse comes in to surprise Walter. Walt actually gets cuffed and read his rights. Not before that people Walt hired to protect him shows up and they end up killing Hank. Of course, Walt did try to call the shot off, and he wasn't really trying to kill Hank, but that's not really important now. The people who showed up end up killing Hank and his partner, and now that Jesse is seen as a liability rather than an asset, it's told that he's going to be taken away by the people who Walt hired and killed somewhere else. Right before Jesse gets taken, though, Walt tells him the truth on how he watched Jane die. I watched Jane die. and he just becomes limp. Unfortunately, it does not end there. Todd, who is related to the people that Walt hired, go to Andrea's house in the dead of night and played the Lord of Death Yu-Gi-Oh card and killed her in front of him. I mean, this guy. Poor Jesse. So last we heard, Jesse was supposed to be taken and killed. But nope, he instead had to cook meth for this gang and he literally stayed in prison there. He was treated horribly, gets traumatic PTSD, and he hears that Walter is going to come and have a meeting with the guys. A terrible looking Jesse approaches and they have a dispute. Walter tackles him to the ground and activates his M60 turret gun car thing and kills everyone except Todd, Walt, and Jesse. Jesse notices that Todd is alive and after all that time and all the torment, he decides to end it for Todd. El Camino is a great deeper dive into the before and after of Jesse, though none of it really comes close to like everything else he's been through. If you've noticed, I've kind of been calling Jesse a kid through the video when he obviously isn't. Though that's what I enjoy about Jesse, he started off as a simple street seller and became something crazily different. He had more money go through him than you and I may ever see in our entire life. He had some high highs and some low lows. I hope you enjoyed this video. I previously did a video on Negan from The Walking Dead in the same kind of style. And if you have any other anti-hero or really any other person you want me to talk about, please let me know in the comments. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't. I'm sure uh, I have something on my channel for you to watch. I will see you guys later. Peace.